Scientist Bruce Mountain is an expert on these lakes and their relationship to the origins of life. We don't have a time machine to take us back, so the only thing we can do is look at things that we think are similar to what they were like. And these hot springs are very, very close to those that would be found on the early Earth. The water's 75 degrees Celsius, so it's, you definitely get burned if you put your finger in there. And uh, it's full of hydrogen sulfide, which is quite poisonous. There's a bit of arsenic in the water as well. It sounds like a deadly mix, but there is life in this pool. There's billions and billions and billions and billions of organisms living in that water. And they form these set of orange fibers. From genetic information, we know that these organisms are quite primitive. So they would be very, very close to, to what the uh, original organisms would have looked like. For the microbes living within the orange fibers, the toxic chemicals in the water are a rich soup of nutrients. Pools like this on the early Earth, fed by volcanic activity, provided all the right chemicals needed for the emergence of life. Deep down below us, there's a body of magma that's very hot. Now, magma itself is giving off gases like carbon dioxide and, and sulfur dioxide, and that provides the food for these bacteria to grow. They're the, the heat engine that, that drives the whole process. Volcanic pools like this are one possible place where life might have begun. But there is an alternative theory. Volcanoes created other places where life could have started, like hydrothermal vents. Discovered just 30 years ago, these super-hot volcanic vents are found deep in the oceans. Today, they support a rich diversity of life. But four billion years ago, the combination of high temperatures and rich chemicals these vents produce might also have stimulated the emergence of life. <laughs> <laughs>